The, the word revolution has been emptied of its meaning in so, so many, many ways. You're wearing revolution on t-shirts now, like it looks great. Yeah. And you think that, yeah, I'm an activist, but what does it really mean? Mm. So I'm talking about a revolution when it's a political revolution. It's like feet on the ground rising up against fascism, against authoritarianism, and against a specific kind of a political machine that denies you dignity and freedom. And those two words, dignity and freedom, were echoed again and again in the streets of Tunisia, the streets of Egypt, Yemen, Bahrain, Syria, Libya, all the countries where you saw these revolutions. And I, I often remind people that in Egypt, as far back as uh, kind of the, the late 1990s, when we had workers in various towns across the country where it was illegal to have a strike, they would go on strike. Mm. And that was a catalyst for the revolution. And then in 2005, we had this amazing year where activists would be staging these tiny, tiny protests. And they were amazing because they were unprecedented in front of the Interior Ministry. And that was a catalyst to the revolution. And I left New York to go and join those protests in 2005. And one thing we would hear again and again, because for the first time in my life in 2005, I took part in a protest of 100 people. That's where it was. And we, were, we marched through this huge working class neighborhood called Shobra in mm. Cairo. And it was the middle of the day and we were chanting down, down with Hosni Mubarak. And I always remind, uh, tell people that there would be busloads of people going back home from work. And they were staring at us, at us from the bus as if we were insane. Hmm. Who are these people who dare to say down, down with Hosni Mubarak because they're going to be disappeared any minute now. Hmm. And you would hear again and again that we're breaking the barrier of fear. So this idea of breaking the barrier of fear, I think, is, is also in, in essential to revolution. But when I then expand it to social and sexual revolution, I, you know, again, I bring the trifecta of misogyny in. Because we as women rest our lives going out with men. And like I said, virginity tests, they broke my arms. I, many of you will remember that iconic image of the, the woman being dragged through Tahrir Square, and they stripped her of her hijab, of the cloak she was wearing, down to her blue bra. And to this day, sadly, we only know her as blue bra girl. This woman has a name, this woman is a revolutionary, yep. but her family has denied her the ability to speak. That is the social and sexual revolution because they're ashamed of what happened to her. She deserves a statue built for her. Right. So I'm, I'm connecting now the breaking the barrier of fear with breaking the barrier of taboo and shame. Mm. Because for me, that's at the heart of the social and the sexual revolution. So when I define especially the sexual revolution, because I think that's gonna tie the Mubarak on the street corner and the Mubarak in the bedroom, the definition of the sexual revolution begins with the declaration, I own my body.